Hey everybody, Jay Krista, say I do forever. Happy coming, Monday! Coming at you, Money Monday. Money Monday. And today we're talking about what the Bible says in Proverbs about money. Yeah, so do you? would you like to be a millionaire? You know what they say, if you oh, yeah. want to be a millionaire, hang out with millionaires, find out what they're doing. It, do you want to you know, lose a ton of weight or be really thin? Then hang out with thin people and find out what they're doing. Uh, would you like to uh, be the wisest person in the world? Then hang out with wise people. Um, you know, it goes on and on and on. Yep. So what Jay and I have found is through the years, we originally did not start out to be very wise in our finances. In fact, um, the beginning. we did a lot of mess ups. Yep. But what we did is start to listen to and hang out with people who knew what they were talking about with money. Yep. Like Dave Ramsey, we did his stuff. Uh, well, even some older friends of ours from yep. where we used to go to church, <coughs> we learned a lot of valuable, wise mm -hmm. uh, things about money from them. Exactly. And so the other thing that we do is we have often gone to the Bible, believe it or not. Um, a lot of people think that the Bible is boring and useless, but there is this wonderful book of the Bible called Proverbs. And yep. it's kind of like all the wise sayings. They're quick, short, they <clears throat> will the point. lead you in the right direction. Yep. And who wrote, uh, who wrote Proverbs? The majority of it was Solomon. Solomon. Yep. And he was the wisest person on earth, I think, ever recorded in history. Yeah, God gave him a choice um, if he wanted riches or, you know, everything or if he wanted wisdom. And he chose wisdom mm -hmm. because I feel that he knew that if he chose wisdom, the rest would fall into place. Yeah, you can actually find that in, I think it's First Kings 3... Yeah, First Kings, First Kings three 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 three. You can actually read about when God tells him, you know, what do you want, uh, riches or wealth, you know, or do you want wisdom? And he actually chose wisdom because he knew if you get wisdom, you get it all. Yep. <laughs> so because wisdom's the key. Exactly. And, and then, he also just for everybody out there, so you know about when King Solomon was king. Uh, that was from. Uh, 970 to 931 BCE and he was born in 990 BCE so just a little yeah a little snippet about he was king, when he was around King David's son yes and uh, he had to make some wise decisions you may have heard it before he had um, he he was so wise that he had people coming from all over the country to ask him advice and he would kind of rule over them and he was uh, you know, he had to make sure everybody was being taken care of and everybody in his kingdom was doing good. And so there was two prostitutes that actually came to him because they both had a child and um, each of them had a child. And one of them rolled over in the middle of the night and actually suffocated, suffocated the, the, child. the child. So she went over to the other one and took her son and they she switched it. So when that one woke up, Hers was dead, and the, but she knew it wasn't hers, her son. Yeah, she could tell. Yeah. You know, when it's your kid, you know. Yeah. You know. So you guys have probably heard this one. They actually go before uh, King Solomon and ask him, you know, well, what are we going to do? And all this kind of stuff. And he was so wise that he said, okay. This is good. What you're going to have to do is then we'll cut the baby in half and one of you will get uh, one half and the other will get the other. Well, the, of, of the, the living baby, the was, one that's still alive that they're yep. arguing over. So we all know that's going to kill the baby. Exactly. So the true mother pulled him aside and said, no, I can't, you cannot cut him in half. That would kill him. I can't do it. Just give the baby to her. To the evil one. Yep. Solomon immediately knew whose baby it was, because the other one said, yeah, let's do that. In, in fact, let's just cut them in half. Yeah. So just some great wisdom on how to deal with people and how to deal with uh, conflict. He did that many times. Yeah, and he totally knew that the woman that was being uh, merciful on her own child was willing to sacrifice mm -hmm. 
giving of her own yes will towards the other evil woman just so the child can have a nice life mm -hmm. and the evil woman was like well she already lost hers because she accidentally rolled over on the baby and smothered it and killed it so she's out a child so if the mm -hmm. other one dies she doesn't care because it wasn't her child to begin with so solomon he he knew what was going on yeah Kind of wish I would have had some of that wisdom Amazing. when my Brilliant. when my kids were fighting. Yeah, and coming to me, she did it. No, she did it. No, she did it. You know, trying to figure that out. Yeah. But anyway, so that's a little tidbit on who King Solomon was, and he wrote most of, not all of, but most, most of, of Proverbs. Proverbs. Yep. And they collected his wise sayings, and he also collected other people's wise sayings, and um, he put them. Uh, all in this book so these have to do he basically collected them for his sons just a minute I got to turn off the dishwasher I can hear it <laughs> yeah, we'll be right back okay, okay we're I'm back. back I had to turn off the dishwasher it was about to really get going here we're back after these messages <laughs> and Jave are you gonna take any more sips of that coffee <laughs> yeah that's good yeah. stuff I really like it you're drinking it down yep <laughs> Always so, will. So anyway, where was I? On um, oh, basically, so the um, wisdom of of Solomon. Yeah, and so the verses. It's all in there. He basically made the book of Proverbs for um, his sons to give them something. Wouldn't you, when when your kids are growing up, love to have this collection of wise sayings to help them as they leave the nest, so to speak? Um, and how to be wise and these have everything to do with how to deal with your neighbors how to deal with a wife how to um, pick a good wife how to deal with your finances how to invest um, how to just basically everything for life I mean yeah money is just one of the aspects aspects or avenues that um, mm -hmm. Solomon takes us down so which is really really good yeah so we took like a couple weeks off if you notice we didn't have a money monday for just a few weeks there because we were like what's next we've covered a lot of subjects we have wisdom now but we want to pull wisdom for you guys from a greater source and so as we really thought about it the last couple weeks we started to realize we need to go over the Proverbs and maybe do a um, do a proverb and just a video on the one verse. And so there's some stuff that's on debt. Let me, we're just gonna name a few of the great Proverbs. Um, so Proverbs talks about getting into debt and they have, if you look up Proverbs 22.7, it tells you the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. And who does that sound like to you guys? It's the credit card companies. Yeah. They're the rich ones. They're the rich. The banks. Yeah. Who get all the, the fees. The banks, all the credit cards, you know, Capital One, what's in your mm -hmm. wallet? Well, obviously not their card. You know? <laughs> what's in their wallet? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not their... <laughs> what's in their wallet? Not my money. <laughs> So yeah, so you know, we'll go over a whole video on debt. Yep. Um, and then Proverbs even has advice. What happens if you are in debt and now you want to get out of debt and you've made a mistake and you're tired of this debt that's just filling your life. So yep. Proverbs 6, 3, um, it says, so do this, my son, to free yourself. It tells you how to free yourself. Since you have fallen into your neighbor's hands, and the reason it says neighbor's hands is because in those days they didn't have credit card companies. Usually you're going to borrow from your neighbor, and now you owe your neighbor a bunch of money, and they're knocking at your door every day going, where's that money? Where's that money? Where's that money? So it says to go to the point of exhaustion and give your neighbor no rest. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Free yourself like a gazelle, from the hand of a hunter. A gazelle is kind of like a deer. Mm -hmm. And what it's basically saying is work so hard and run so fast that you pay that debt as fast as you can and get out of debt. Yep. And that's what Kristen and I did. Um, 
quite yeah. a quite a few years ago now. Um, we were forty one thousand dollars in debt, up to our eyeballs. We mm -hmm. couldn't we couldn't even see. We were drowning in debt, and we just decided it's time to get gazelle intensive, and the intensity and to do the debt snowball. And we did the first one all the way down to the last one, and now we're debt free, and mm -hmm. so it's been really good, mm -hmm. and it does work because we're proof that it works. Um, mm -hmm. All we have left is a house payment, and uh, as soon as I get back to work, then we're going to double our house payment, and we're going to pay our house off really fast. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to do. Exactly. Another uh, great proverb uh, on making a plan. There's a bunch of them about yep. telling you how to plan things out. So Proverbs 21.5 says, The plans of the diligent lead to profit, as surely as haste leads to poverty. So you'll notice that you don't want haste. Now, the other verse was talking about to, to have no slumber, to work really hard, to pay everything off, but that's not haste. Um, this is talking about don't, uh, don't make be hasty in decisions. Decisions. Decision don't, making. Yeah. You, you need to take your time, think it through, mm -hmm. you know, think through what is going to transpire if you make a hasty decision, then I guarantee you it's not going to be a good decision. Mm hmm you know, you start making fast, quick decisions and it usually doesn't turn out good. Yeah. You know. Well, and it even will talk about inheritance. Are you getting an inheritance or mm -hmm. what about your 401k retirement? This is what Proverbs mm -hmm. has to say about that. Proverbs 20, 21. An inheritance quickly gained at the beginning will not be blessed in the end. What does that mean? It probably means that if you spend say you're supposed to get an inheritance from an uncle and you're like, Hey uncle, I know when you die, I'm going to get that inheritance, but can I get that a little early mm -hmm. so that I can pay this off or I can do this or I can do that? Well, basically if you get your inheritance early and you spend it, then it's not going to be blessed in the end because you're going to be poor at the end of your life. Well, and just think about all the people, like, I think I've said this before in other videos that we've done as far as money goes, but look at all the people that win the lottery. Mm -hmm. So they get this bulk sum of money. They've never mm -hmm. had a lot of money in their life. All of a sudden they're handed millions of dollars. What happens? They blow through all of it. They waste it. It all just goes by the wayside and they're broke, they're homeless, or they're poor, or they're right back working where they used to, or they... Uh, mm -hmm. working in another job that they absolutely hate because they squandered and wasted all their money. That's really good because you could get the inheritance early. Yep. But you could always invest it and go slow in making the decisions because if you spend it all at once before it's even in your hands, it's gone. And think about this. So the people that have won the lottery, so if they were wise, if they would have taken all that money and put it in the bank and lived off the interest, they would still have all that money because that would have been so much money and they would have made so much interest. Mm -hmm. They could have lived comfortably on the interest and still had all the money just sitting there in the bank yep. with their name on it. And they would have been very well taken care of. Mm -hmm. Very well taken. I mean, can you imagine the interest on $10 million, $20 million, $50 million? Yeah. It just is mind blowing. And that goes back to wisdom. Imagine, wisdom speaks volumes. Imagine if before, before they got, they won the lottery, they had studied the book of Proverbs. Yeah, can you imagine? Yeah. Can you imagine? I and guarantee I, you their outcome would have been different. And let me tell you something else. Imagine before we got married and turned into adults, we knew Proverbs back and forth. If you have teenagers yeah. or young kids, if you want them to succeed, yeah. teach them these things in Proverbs because yep. they're going to need it someday. I knew the Bible, kind of. I grew up in church, but I don't think I ever grasped, grasped onto what Proverbs was really saying. And if I did, I must have ignored it because obviously we didn't, you know, now we know. Now we're hanging out with the wise and that's hanging out in Proverbs. We're hanging out with Dave Ramsey. Well, well not really, but. <laughs> I think, yeah. Hi, Dave. <laughs> I think though, if if Krista wouldn't have married a free spirit, if she would have ended up with someone that was more like um, organized and very like methodical as far as money goes, 
that she would have had plenty of money in the bank. But when we met, you know, I was like, I want to spend money and I want to do this and that and the other. And so we didn't save. And now because of my poor uh, money skills, now we're paying for it. Well, we were paying for it. No, we're not paying mm -hmm. for it now. But we were paying for it. And it took us this many years to get to where we're at. And now we're finally debt free other than house payments. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like the prodigal son. I don't know if you guys know the story of the prodigal son, but the prodigal son was the oldest son in a family of two sons. Correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, if I mess no, this you're... up. But, <laughs> so far, so good. <laughs> so the oldest son wanted his birthright right away. He wanted his inheritance. Mm -hmm. So he takes his inheritance and he leaves and he goes and blows the money. He just totally wastes it and spends it. And then he ends up sleeping in a... Pig hog pin. <laughs> hog pin, right? Yeah. And so he's sleeping with the mud and the, the poo and the muck and all that stuff. And then he finally humbles himself and he goes to go home. And his father was always waiting for him. And his father sees him coming in the distance. And his father is overwhelmed with joy, right? Mm -hmm. He tells them to prepare a huge feast to welcome his prodigal son home. And he gives him a huge banquet in his name. He gives him a robe to wear, you know, around him, uh, a ring. Mm -hmm. So he's like royalty. So basically, in a nutshell, even though the prodigal son totally blew it and squandered his inheritance, his father still welcomed him back home, which is a cool story. Well, and so much so after no matter the where you're at financially no matter what you've messed up with, mm -hmm. you can, from this point on, hang out with the wise, yep. hang out in Proverbs. Yep. You can turn it around. We got ourselves into a, a, a pig pickle. pen. A pig pen. A real pickle. <laughs> <laughs> and we pulled ourselves out. We <clears throat> hung out with the wise. We learned these things. And we would like to make our next series of Money Mondays on these proverbs and the wisdom that they have so that yeah. you can actually make money, keep money, save money. You can have money as peace and um, prosperity. Well, and you can, <clears throat> and you can give a lot of weight too. Mm -hmm. You can bless so many people around you. Yeah. You know, you, if you're wealthy, if you can save your money and then become <laughs> cats right here. Um, <laughs> if you can let's see, He's That's Alexander. Hi, Alexander. Hi, Alexander. <laughs> so if you can save your money mm -hmm. and then you can turn around and help people like when they're in a bind. If you know somebody that is not going to be able to pay their house payment, you can pay it. You can even do it secretly. You can talk to somebody that knows them and just pay the house payment. Or you can pay their gas bill, their, mm -hmm. I, I, their power bill, or their grocery bill. There are so many things that you can bless others with, with your money. Mm -hmm. it, it just is a good, it's such a great feeling to help others. Let it us know really in the is. comments if this is something you're interested in following. Let us know if it's something that uh, you'd be interested in. Yeah. Because that's what we're going to do the next few Mondays um, is just kind of look at one of these verses and just break it down and what it means today. Yep. And let's all sit with the wise. Let's all Heck yeah, cuz we have learn. we have a list of all of the ones that has to do with money and different topics mm -hmm. about how to deal with money. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm excited. So be some good uh content. Yeah. So we hope yep. to see you every Monday. Yep. Here we will post a new video every Monday about um some wisdom to get you uh all situated so that we can all bless other people with our wealth and have a little peace in our life. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. That's We're all good. I got. <laughs> all right. Jay Krista, helping you say I do forever. Till next time, guys. We'll see ya. Bye.